Welcome to the Hornets Hivecast, presented by Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Associates, the official eye, ear, nose, and throat care provider of the Charlotte Hornets. Here's your host, Sam Farber. Without further ado, let's welcome the pride of Providence Day, Goat Chargers, Grant Williams here to the Hornets Hivecast. Grant, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. What does it mean to you to get to play now professionally in your hometown? It means the world. Um, I talked about bringing back the buzz when it was 20, what was it, 2015, maybe, I think around that, those years, with my friend Jonathan Hoppy at Providence Day, who's one of the bigger char- uh, Hornets fans. And I remember that like it was yesterday. And being able to put this jersey on for this city, um, I know how this city is, and I know exactly what you know Charlotte basketball means and North Carolina basketball means. So um, especially when this team wins games and it's good, they're going to be out here supporting us, and that's our job to do that and put that product on the court so we can have these fans as excited as I was in those years of Kemba, Marvin Williams, Big Al, and everybody else. You can feel that pride, and it, it's not lost on me. I don't think it's an accident, at least. Home games, leading the team out of the tunnel, it's you and Seth Curry, or it's Seth Curry and you. It's some order of that, too. That can't be an accident. Honestly, it's something that we were doing in Dallas, too, which is kind of funny that I look back, and it made me even more significant now that, you know, Seth leads us out of the tunnel because, you know, he's our most tenured uh, player. He's also one of the leaders on this team, whether it's vocal or not, and he's a guy that we look to um, both as a voice, both as the professional that he is coming in his approach every single day, and, you know, myself, I just try my best to do the same, bring that same energy. It can't be easy to, to step into that kind of leadership role. I mean, half the rotation changed, a third of the roster, but there were a lot of guys that were here already. How seamless was it to kind of reinvent the, uh, not pecking order, but some of the leadership roles within the locker room? Yeah, it's not much about reinventing. It's just more of understanding your position. Like, I came in to observe, to start, you know, not trying to be a guy that just comes in rah-rah, vocal leader. Um, and then you learn from... Um, the guys that are here, what they had experience with, and then you try your best to give your feedback on where you've been, what a success have you had, and you know you got to go out there and play basketball first. Show them that you can play. That's how really your voice kind of shows that pecking order and shows that you're well intentioned. You know, um, being a guy that they know, I had to tell them. I said, guys, I don't need to score thirty points every single night. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to win games. So. Um, you guys have to understand, yeah, yeah, I might be popping, and it might be a necessarily did it could be a shot, right? But instead, we're going to the second action. I'm gonna get you open, Brandon. I'm gonna get you open, Seth. I'm gonna get you open, DB. And that was just a new, new, fresh voice and fresh life. I feel like, and um, everybody has to be well intentioned on this team to play great basketball, and especially with Lamelo out, and we're missing guys like Mark Lamelo, two key key guys in this rotation. We have to be there for one another and have each other's backs. Grant Williams, our guest today here on the Hornets Hivecast. Grant, you've got a, a varied set of interests beyond just basketball, and I would assume a lot of that comes from your parents. Your mom worked for NASA. Your dad was a basketball player in college in his own right, but also uh, was a musician, worked in the entertainment industry, in security. What are some attributes that maybe you pulled from your parents and their diversified careers and interests that maybe manifest themselves through you on the floor? Yeah, it's a bit, you know, I always say I was fortunate. You know, I was able to learn a lot of things, both parents, you know, my mom being the education, you know, understanding the value of it, understanding the value of mentorship, understanding the value of giving back. My dad being the socialite, being the one to understand the value of relationships, understand the value of um, the industry that you're in, you know, um, he was surrounded by the more high profile individuals for most of his life, both from basketball and growing up in New York playing, um, at the Rucker and all those with those guys. And then also in the security and stage management roles, um, being able to do that. So, um, I'm fortunate, you know, to be able to have those two to be able to kind of look to as history and be able to use that history to better the position that I am today. There's no one route to the NBA, but the more common one in this era tends to be a player is identified as a superstar athlete and potential lottery pick at like 12 or 16, a very, very young age, and and it just kind of flows from there. They stay in certain rankings from that point on. You kind of follow a a different path. You are a a self-proclaimed nerd. Uh, You had opportunity to go the Ivy League route. You weren't necessarily that five-star pick out of Providence Day, but you made yourself into a major prospect. How did your journey to the NBA make you the player and the person that you are today? Yeah, um, it, it just keeps you humble in a way, you know, understanding that 
you weren't in this position to start. I was around people that were, you know, the Bam Adebayo's, the Harry Giles, Dennis Smith's in this in this state, and you know, you kind of I got to gain confidence from playing those guys, understanding that you compete with them. Like I never knew if I was going to be an NBA player. But I knew that I was battling with these guys. I knew if I could take it to them in college, the same way. Like I was, if I battled them in college, I learned that. Dang, I can probably do this in the pro level. And at the pro level, trying to hold my own here as well. And um, it's just a different edge and mentality you have to play with. And and you can't forget where you came from. You can't forget um, the work that you put in to get here. And getting back to that love for the band of basketball and love for the competitive drive of winning. You know, um, I was fortunate. I was in a great position in Boston where we won a lot of games. And I made an impact on a lot of them, but also sometimes there, you can not make an impact and um, skeet by and get a win. Um, being in this this organization, this team, um, we're going to have to use each other and, and really compete every single night. And there's no off nights. There's no um, getting off when, you know, guys aren't feeling good or, you know, guys are down or not feeling like playing that night. And talent carries. Like, we're us. we got to be a bunch of junkyard dogs that are willing to win. I've... Tried some different nicknames with some of the new guys. We're getting to know you still. One that I've put for you is the mayor, partially because you're from Charlotte. Langston Words. I already, <laughs> already took that from you. So. There you go. Langston Words, that was his nickname for me for the my first, like, shish, when I started eight years old on to when I graduated high school. He was the one that, he never published it, but he was always the one that called me the mayor. I love it. Well, all right. We're, we're keeping it alive. Then the mayor, uh, partially you're from Charlotte. Uh, also, because when you're on the floor with Miles and Mann and Martin and Miller, Grant Williams, you know, it fits, but it's fun to have a 5M out there, Mm -hmm. Um, but also because you exhibit and exude leadership, and it's obviously been recognized by your peers. You're a first vice president of the Players Association. What does leadership mean for you, both in that role? Maybe you can shed some light on on what that entails, but also for this team here that you're on now. Yeah, I always say it comes in different forms. Um, Sometimes leadership can look as a vocal leader. Other times it can just be your approach and how you you know, work every single day. And from the MBPA perspective, the first vice president's job is to assist the president in any needs that he may necessarily have and also be in discussions in regards to league and organizational matters. Um, being there to support players, being there as a voice, to be able to listen and also understand players' needs and hopefully um, garner relationships to be able to push the league forward later on in the future. You know, as the league continues to get younger, um, it's going to be critical for us to really have a involvement with our guys at a young age, not only just grassroots, but also um, when they get to the first step into the league and make sure you garner those relationships from the beginning so that way um, they know you're being true in all the words that you're saying and that you have their backs and they just don't assume that it's they're on their own because this league can be lonely and isolating and they shouldn't have to feel that way. And then from a leadership role for this team, I know that it starts with the – day-to-day approach of professionalism, showing them exactly what it takes to really win at this level. And on the court, being a guy that rarely makes mistakes, but even if he does, is willing to say that he made a mistake. Um, That's a key point of being a leader is you're not supposed to be perfect. You know, you're not going to win every battle. You're not going to win every war. But how you respond, how you communicate, how you, you know, bring guys in after the fact is going to be critical in how you develop and how that leadership role is viewed. Grant Williams, our guest today here on the Hornets Hivecast. Grant, you have an outsider's perspective of the organization, having played outside of Charlotte for the majority of your career and this season included, and also your relationships with all players around the league with your role in the Players Association. What is the outside opinion of Charlotte, the city, the franchise, the team? Yeah, it's a different different feeling because I'm a guy from Charlotte. So I've seen it from when I was a kid, seeing the organization, how it was operated, um, when I was – as an adult playing against them and then now on the team. Um, from the outside in, you know, people always assume unprofessional, you know, all those things that they describe a team as. But when you get here, you realize these guys are really, you know, they're young, but they have a level of maturity that isn't shown. shown. They have made mistakes as they're supposed to. You know, at a young age, you're allowed to make mistakes. But how you respond to those mistakes is really what shows your character and how you're trying to develop. And I think this organization has done a phenomenal job of, of protecting those guys and their mistakes. And now it's just a matter of them stepping up and really investing back into the organization that give. Um, there's so much talent here. You know, LaMelo, Brandon Miller, Miles, Mark, um, down the line across the board. Those are just the core of young talent. And those guys are uh, uh, really have a chance to be a playoff team and establish a championship culture as long as, you know, they focus on 
the right things. And that's something that hopefully I can assist with. And I think they've actually, Cliff has been a phenomenal advocate and guy for them. You know, he's disciplined them. He's helped been a lot on the, especially on the basketball floor and teaching them the right principles and how to play the game. You know, that's something that I feel like isn't brought to light. You know, they play good basketball here when, when they're committed to it. You know, like that's something outside looking in. They always are in the competitive games. You know, when you play against Boston, the big name teams, they were always a team that, you know, we struggled against for some reason. They always came and we would end up winning the game at the end, but um, because of whether it was mistakes or turnovers or whatever else. But, you know, it's not t- talent that's the issue here um, in terms of, I remember Cliff, like before, maybe, but now, especially um, with the guys, especially as we get healthy, talent's going to be there. It's just a matter of how we commit to winning, how we commit to being a team. And, Everybody here really enjoys one another, and that's something that you love to see. That's the first step. Now the next step is understanding what it takes to win every single night. Can you put into context that level of talent? Because obviously, as you mentioned in Boston, it it takes much more than just being talented. It takes players with the level of commitment and a chemistry and that championship X factor to get to where you guys were for so many years. But you also need a Jason Tatum. You need players that are that all NBA level of talent. So you look around the roster at the Lamellos and the Brandon Millers as you've gotten to know them. How good are the talents on this team? They're the same. Um, they are, have the potential to be the same, especially. You know, I look at Brandon and I don't I see a spitting image of Paul George. You know, in a way, it's just a matter of how he develops. You know, with his body, how he learns how to use his feet. You know, in the fundamental game. Um, PG does a phenomenal job of being able to bump guys off to get to his shots, but also, you know, using Serene's to get open. Um, I always look at the young PG versus the PG now. They play two completely different games. Brandon's, I think, the shooter that PG is now um, compared to what he was in Indiana. And I think that he has that potential. And then with LaMelo, like I've always said, LaMelo has so much talent, you know, especially when he's on the floor. He's a guy that can impact a lot of games. Um, I look at LaMelo. He's a guy that can reminds me a bit of a mix of Luka and Tyrese, you know, Maybe not necessarily the score that Luca is, but the passer that Tyrese is and being able to go with pace up the floor and um, being able to make really take control of a game and, and the energy around it. So um, those two have a bright future ahead as long as they stay committed and stay focused on the things that matter. Um, keeping basketball first, um, understanding that everything comes from basketball, understanding that how your teammates, how people in this league and everybody view you um, is, is critical because as they continue to grow um, – the league will grow with them. It's a matter if they want to do that or if they want to be left in the dust. And I think that they're really committed to doing the the former rather than the latter. Last one for you. Obviously, uh, injuries have kind of submarined this season and really hurt the Hornets. But you've talked about the level of talent here. In your opinion, what's the timeline to get to where you want to be and what is the ceiling for this squad? But this team really has a summer. Like, I think that that's all we need just to really focus on one another and bring the pieces in that necessarily the team may think we need. And then I think we go on rolling starting next year. He's the mayor, Grant Williams. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the Hornets Hivecast. Thank you. That does it for this edition of the Hornets Hivecast. Remember, the HHC is available daily wherever you get your podcasts all throughout the NBA season with game previews every game day, reviews every day after, and in-depth interviews everywhere in between. I'm Sam Farber. It's been a pleasure and a privilege having you along, and we'll talk to you next time right here on the Hornets Hivecast. Thank you for listening to the Hornets Hivecast, brought to you by Senta, the official eye, ear, nose, and throat care provider of the Charlotte Hornets. For more coverage, visit Hornets.com.